Toy Story 4 takes Andy's, I mean Bonnie's toys, on one last adventure and it's chock full of secrets and easter eggs. Let's take a look around and see what we can find. If you were stunned by the seemingly instant absence of Annie Potts' Bo Peep in Toy Story 3, you're about to see exactly how she left Andy's house. It seems she was donated on a rainy night, and though Woody voiced by Tom Hanks staged a rescue, Bo had another plan in mind. A plan that Woody as Andy's favorite toy felt unable to see through. As they share a sad goodbye under the car, take a good look at the license plate, RMRF97. What could that possibly mean? It actually represents another dark time in Pixar and Toy Story's history when an animator accidentally typed RM-R-F back in 1997. The command deleted all of Toy Story 2 from Pixar's database. Luckily, an executive on maternity leave had a backup at home and saved the movie. There's another Easter egg in this flashback. If you remember, A Bug's Life showed up on the calendar in Andy's room way back in Toy Story 2. Well, in Toy Story 4, it looks like we're on the same calendar but a different month, with the movie's cast more prominent in the picture. The events of Toy Story 2 took place in August, and the prologue of Toy Story 4 takes place in the month of September. Could it be that Bo left just weeks after Jesse and Bullseye arrived? We learn that the events of that rainy night took place nine years prior to the rest of Toy Story 4, so it's possible. But of course, that was a childhood ago, and now Woody and the rest of the gang are part of Bonnie's crew. You can certainly tell that a lot of time has passed. Look closely at Buzz and you'll notice his stickers are beginning to peel around the edges. The signs of time are still evident on Woody, too. Take a look at that right arm of his and you'll see he still has the extra stuffing and stitching from when Andy fixed him up after the cowboy camp in Toy Story 2. It's been a tough transition for Woody. He's no longer the top toy in the room. Take a look here as he's kept in the closet during playtime. As sad as this might seem, he's in extremely good company. I know what you're thinking, what's so special about a big green chair, a rhino, a tiger, and an elephant? Well, these toys are voiced by and named after four of the biggest comedy legends of both TV and the silver screen. Cheryl Burnett is voiced by iconic comedian Carol Burnett, Melephant Brooks, the hilarious Mel Brooks, obviously, and he's joined by his comedy partner Carl Reiner Rosserus. And last but not least, the tiger, Bitey White, is voiced by the golden girl herself, Betty White. Sadly, one comedy legend's voice is featured posthumously, and that's the voice of Mr. Potato Head, Don Rickles. With a lifetime of comedy recordings and features under his belt, the filmmakers were able to go through decades of material to piece together his performance for the film, very much the same way they did in Cars 3, with radio personality Tom Magliozzi, part of the brotherly Rusty's duo who sponsored Lightning McQueen. There are a ton of secrets and easter eggs to be found in Toy Story 4's fairgrounds and Second Chances Antiques locations. So, let me set the scene real quick. Bonnie goes to kindergarten orientation. She's scared, so Woody sneaks into her bag to comfort her, only to help her make a new toy from the arts and crafts at school. A googly-eyed spork named Forky, voiced by Tony Hale, that Woody must teach as a beloved child's plaything to Bonnie and not trash. Woody introduces Forky to the rest of Bonnie's toys, and a day later, they're all scooped up into a recreational vehicle for an impromptu road adventure with Bonnie and her family. Hey, not bad. But before we get to our final destination, let's take a pit stop. The first stop for Bonnie and her parents is a gas station. But did you happen to notice the branding? Dinoco, the famous racing club from the car series. But did you know that the Dinoco brand goes back even farther? Dinoco is actually an Easter egg from the first Toy Story. Andy's mom gassed up there before taking Andy to Pizza Planet, home of the famous recurring Pixar Easter egg, the Pizza Planet delivery truck. This leads us to the fairgrounds. As common as it would be to find an actual Pizza Planet delivery truck in the Toy Story universe, the filmmakers decided to up the difficulty setting for this sighting. Good luck finding it in the traffic scenes. This time around, you might need a leg up from a fairground employee. Enter Axel the Carney, voiced by Bill Hader. Get a load of his left calf and you'll find our favorite truck. Aside from Mater, obviously, tattooed right there. But wait, who's that little girl at his shooting gallery booth? Pigtails, pink shirt, could it be? My, look how she's grown! It's Boo from Monsters, Inc. She's not the only one hanging around Axel's booth. Meet Ducky and Bunny, voiced by comedy sensations Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele. They give Buzz a little grief before joining him on a search for Woody and Forky. But later on, they set their sights on a couple of frogs, dropping a whole bunch of frog references and nicknames. At one point, Ducky even says, Leave it to us, Jeremiah. Does that reference escape you? Well. It's no Kermit or Mr. Toad reference, but rather a dog reference, as in the band Three Dog Night, 
who performed the song Joy to the World, which starts with the lyrics Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Now you get that rainbow connection? Before we leave the fairgrounds, keep your eyes peeled during the post credit sequence shot overlooking the fair at sunset. See the bouncy castle on the right? Fans of Onward will notice a plug easter egg in the form of a Pegasus, the same design that would later be seen on Barley's van Guinevere. Buzz, Ducky, and Bunny meet up with Woody, only to find that he has found someone too, his long-lost love Bo Peep, as well as her sheep Billy Goat and Gruff. When Bo sees Buzz for the first time in almost a decade, she yells, Buzz, my old moving buddy! How fun is that? It's a callback to her line from the first Toy Story, after witnessing Buzz fly, er, uh, fall with style. Did you notice that Billy Goat and Gruff herded their own Easter egg earlier? Jump back to when they almost run over Woody and the remote-controlled skunk. The moment they give a safety pin over to Bo is the moment you should be paying close attention, because that pin is one half of the Easter egg I'm talking about. You ready for the next thing they bring to Bo? It's a grape soda bottle cap. A safety pin, a bottle cap, put them together and you've got the honorary Ellie badge that Carl gave to Russell in the Pixar adventure comedy Tearjerker Up. Die Hard fans will also remember that grape soda cans were used in the Buzz Lightyear commercial as seen on TV at Sid's house in the original Toy Story, but make sure you're keeping a close eye on all the merchandise at the Second Chance Antique Shop. You might just find a tin sign advertising Up's brand of grape soda amongst the other trinkets and treasures. Here's a hint, if you see hubcaps, you're close. Speaking of hubcaps, here's a super hard easter egg. Think you got it? There's a mint green model car on the shelf under the hubcaps with a very familiar fin-cut frame. A 1950s Motorama show car. But not just any show car, it's a model of Flo from Pixar's Cars. Want another vehicle-based cameo? This one's even trickier. Bo is enlisted the help of some more friends to help Woody and Buzz get Forky back. Giggle McDimples, voiced by Ali Maki, and Duke Kaboom, played by Neo himself, Keanu Reeves. Just before Duke's first big jump scanned the wide shot of the shop. How that sweet little old lady got it up there, I don't know, but on the high ledge on the right, there's what looks to be a red motorcycle. It's Elastigirl's bike from Incredibles 2. You might remember that Forky got lost in this antique shop in the first place because Woody saw Bo's lamp in the window and decided to investigate. In their search, Woody and Forky meet Gabby Gabby and her team of Bensons. Gabby Gabby is voiced by Christina Hendricks of Mad Men fame. In Woody's first scene with Gabby Gabby, make sure you perk up your ears to the tune that's being played on the record player. If the song that's playing fills you with an overwhelming sense of foreboding, then you might be a fan of Stanley Kubrick's classic horror film The Shining. The song is called Midnight, The Stars, and You, and it plays in the ballroom of the haunted Overlook Hotel. Gabby Gabby has ulterior motives in keeping Woody at the shop. She wants his voice box in order to attract the store owner's granddaughter, Harmony. Woody and Forky make a run for it, but only Woody makes it out after catching Harmony's eye. Speaking of eyes, keep your eyes on Gabby Gabby's eyes. The filmmakers made sure that they would wobble a little as her head moves. This was a common characteristic of the type of doll that she is, one whose eyes close when you lay it back. But as the movie goes on and we start to feel sympathy for Gabby Gabby, the animators ease off on that detail in a subtle effort to further humanize her for the audience. Finally, Woody sacrifices his voice box to save Forky and Gabby Gabby gets her chance to make an impression on Harmony, only to be dropped in an old milk crate. Poor Gabby. Don't worry though, things turn around for her later. But take a look over to the left. Do you see that red unicycle? Talk about a deep cut! That's red from the 1987 Pixar short Red's Dream. There are a ton of old-school Pixar Easter eggs lurking about. There's a straight-up cameo from Tin Toy who's working the door at the Tiki Pinball Club. Tin Toy is the title character from the 1988 Pixar short. As Woody and Bo are pulling Duke Kaboom's launcher up, it passes by a tray of what looks like either cocktail napkins or coasters with a very Pixar B on them and the name Wally Bees. This is a callback to the 1984 animated short The Adventures of Andre and Wally B. Also, see that stack of board games next to the film projector? Lifted, Knickknack, Lava, Red's Dream, but that last one is super special. Ed's Hand was a student film created by Fred Park and Pixar co-founder Edwin Catmull way back in 1972. What an exciting time to see such early renderings, and look how far the technology has come. We've only caught a glimpse of all the secrets there are to see in Toy Story 4. Don't worry, we'll visit again soon, but until then, I hope you liked this video and found some cool things you hadn't seen before in Disney Pixar's Toy Story 4. Don't forget to subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie trivia, secrets, and Easter eggs.